assalamu alaikum everyone we are live comics college is live once again uh, and today we are here for a reason and the reason is uh, somebody who is known as who is regarded as the greatest literary genius the greatest writer of all times the greatest dramatist of all times yes i am talking about william shakespeare who is also regarded as a universal poet because uh, his writings and the themes he touched upon were quite universal in nature he produced some immortal characters he wrote some immortal lines and due to which uh, shakespeare is celebrated every year because 23rd april is known as shakespeare day the ones who love literature they are they are familiar with uh, 23rd april being uh, the shakespeare day so we are here to celebrate william shakespeare and i am uh, lucky to uh, have been joined by a few uh, senior faculty members of english department comics college i am going to quickly introduce them one by one and then we'll start the discussion though i am going to moderate the session but at the same time i would like to contribute uh what i have learned through william shakespeare's writings during my uh, school years college years during my uh, degree years and during my teaching years so thank you very much for joining us uh, ms rohana ms rohana is the head of english department at comics college and uh, uh, she is one of the faculty senior faculty members and uh, she has a vast experience of teaching uh, learners at the intermediate uh, level uh sir zainul abdin i'm sure most of you know uh, know sir zainul abdin because he has been with with me uh, in in previous sessions that that we arranged on facebook uh, assistant professor uh, zainul abdin is one of the senior faculty members of comics college english department and i would uh, again reinforce that he has a vast experience of teaching learners both at school as well as at the intermediate level i have my my contemporary teacher ms bis bushra atif who has been teaching students at the intermediate level for over 10 years now so i i welcome you all to this um, a thought provoking and insightful session thank you very much for joining me uh, i'll start this discussion this conversation with ms rohana ms rohana uh, because our immediate audience is intermediate students and we teach them poems like under the greenwood tree and the seven ages of man uh, where shakespeare's ideology of life has very clearly been talked about like we know we teach our learners that shakespeare perceived human life as drama and this world this physical world as stage so we know how shakespeare perceived life but then there is you know Uh, 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 uh the other side uh, to his ideology because we uh, get to see a, a, a few famous characters created by william shakespeare committing suicide like if i talk about hamlet ophelia commits suicide if i talk about macbeth lady macbeth committed suicide if i talk about uh, julius caesar then brutus's wife portia committed suicide so a few renowned characters immortal characters that shakespeare created they committed suicide so what what do you think what does it reveal about shakespeare's take on life about shakespeare's ideology of life thank you aruch uh, first of all uh, i think that uh, you said that we teach at intermediate level we teach students about shakespeare's philosophy of life uh, I, i don't think that we exactly teach them about his philosophy of life we have uh, two very short pieces of poetry by william shakespeare one of them is very philosophical and other one is very simple in terms of diction and talks about one simple king uh, you may say that is the price of ambition has to pay so seven ages of man definitely very deep very philosophical and uh, it's it's a commentary on life uh, where we try those uh, young uh, students to understand how he perceived and all this but when we look at the play if you talk about the plays of uh, william shakespeare and when you have uh, started off with tragedies also and in the tragedies you have also started off with uh, suicide that have been mentioned so i i think uh, our students do not exactly get to see that side because uh, the pieces of poetry which are in our uh, curriculum they are from a comedy as you like it right so in tragedy you ask about uh, suicide why william shakespeare has uh, concluded or incorporated or what does it exactly reflect uh, well uh, when you uh, look at uh, history of uh, these plays when you look at uh, William Shakespeare's idea of uh, writing tragedy, because the kind of fame he has gained through tragedy is definitely different from what he gained uh, through his sonnets or through his uh, comedies. 
uh, foreign learners they usually know him as one who has written tragedies so uh, he basically followed uh, aristotle the uh, philosophy of a tragedy right so when uh, we talk about tragedy it has to has kind of a formula it uh, it has to has uh, some kind of ingredients you may say or elements you may say uh, of which a tragedy should be uh, composed of or it should be written around and among them is uh, a tragic hero with a tragic flaw there is always a flaw in his character and poetic lack of poetic justice is there in uh, tragedies right so lack of poetic justice meaning to say that uh, in the course or during the course of the play you don't see nature taking control of things at, as itself it would be you know in uh, uh, it is also said that the fault is not in our stars the fault lies in ourselves right so this is where uh, william shakespeare has uh, quite clearly uh, shown this thing that whatever we do we should be responsible for that right so i feel that those uh, deaths or those uh, suicides that have been there and especially of uh, such prominent figures who were intellectual who were prince warriors such accomplished people in their life and they have been through uh, a lot during the course of the play and they also reflect upon the flaw in their character so because of that they suffer that downfall and they have to face towards the end some guilt or some shame and in order to live a life of guilt and shame they prefer a life of or a death of honor so this motto was kind of you know promoted by them and it is quite paradoxical in terms of uh, this the medieval time because in medieval time the suicides were considered as people as something which display the person is uh, you know, uh, is a weakling is incapable of facing the difficulties of life or maybe the person is uh, does not have enough faith in the mercy of god so their uh, dead body <coughs> excuse me the dead bodies were not given enough uh, you may say reverence or uh, kind of sanctity that they deserve and all so shakespeare when he introduced these suicides he has given a kind of another dimension to it that is the person preferred that because he did not want to live a life of guilt or shame right True. so or he wanted to pay off for that True. shortcoming in his character for that weakness so he has uh, in in this uh, renaissance uh, time period in this uh, time of revival he has given a different dimension so it's quite paradoxical also and uh, as we were sharing uh, statistics before that Uh, 15 uh, 15 tragedies written by william shakespeare there are 13 deaths which are uh, definite suicide and there are eight scholars have confirmed on 13 deaths as definite and eight as uh, uh, maybe they were suicide or they were uh, due to some natural cause so uh, basically your question was that uh, what is the reason for hmm. this i would say that uh, tragedy is something that is an imitation of something serious uh, something that has magnitude and it is presented in a dramatic manner right mm-hmm. and uh, simultaneously it should arouse in its audience the feeling of pity and fear so technically when you connect it with lack of uh, poetic justice with technically when you connect it with this element that is there should be lack of poetic justice there should be uh, this uh, flow in the character which is called uh, marcia marcia Mar- yeah marcia Martia. Martia. Right? So this flow in the character okay. so uh, basically uh, william shakespeare made use of all of these things i will be so his own now coming to his own philosophy that mm-hmm. what he believed i think he was not in love with life this is my perception true i, I agree with this uh, he was not in life at all and mm-hmm. he felt very often it's it's a story told by an idiot it is something which is uh, filled with uh, fury you know uh, in one uh, as if i can recall one it is said that if i lose life i lose a thing uh, a thing which would be treasured by some fool 
right? So something like this, when you read him, you come to know that he was definitely not in love with life, and uh, he preferred to have a life which was, or a death maybe, which was so honorable that it is going to impart some magnitude, or it at the same time it's going to give this feeling of catharsis, pity, and fear. I miss there is one thing that runs parallel, I mean, that runs the same in all tragedies that he has composed. The characters who committed suicide, they made some terrible mistakes and they suffered due to that very mistake and life became a burden for them and they got rid of it. And then we know that uh, the way Shakespeare has depicted human life in the seven ages of man probably is trying to tell us that life is not something to be taken very seriously because it has to end someday. Simultaneously, you see the working of nature, because this is the very definition of tragedy that uh, one is entangled uh, yeah. in a life where uh, their own doing and at the same time doing of fate is uh, causing a lot many things to them. So there also in Seven Ages of Man, we see that this transition is inevitable, no matter who you are, no matter what you have attained or what are your accomplishments that you have to go through, whether you like it, you want it. You know, basically that shows the, how helpless we are or hapless we are in the face of providence, in the face of life for that matter. We simply just uh, have to go through one transition to another. Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much, Miss. Uh, Sir so Zen, because Miss Rohana has just talked about tragedies and uh, uh, we have just dealt with the subject of life and death in Shakespeare's plays, I think this brings us to Hamlet, one of the most popular tragedies written by William Shakespeare. And Hamlet, the character of Hamlet, has been heavily criticized for, for his inability to act, like for procrastination on his part. Like Hamlet could not, you know, achieve justice in time. And but, but but see, there is one moral side to it because Hamlet wanted to have this assurance that he was killing the right man. Uh, he wanted to have this assurance that Claudius was the really uh, was 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 the really one who killed his father. So how how you perceive Hamlet's inability uh, to act in time? Okay, thank you very much, Anuj. Uh, first of all, this event is really uh, very interesting. Talking about Shakespeare in itself is a great honor and. I feel greatly, uh, you know, privileged that you have asked me to join you as well today. So when we talk about Shakespeare in general, we see yes, Shakespeare has a lot to offer to the audience uh, because all the uh, all these uh, you know plays that are written they are meant to be staged. And at the same time, the learners, no matter what age you were talking about, the intermediate students, but all the other uh, on the other hand, we know that there are certain schools, institutions where Shakespeare is taught. There are people who read and study Shakespeare and reading Shakespeare is very, very important because this, I would come back to that Hamlet question that you just asked, but this is very important and significant because he, we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, this, the world's greatest uh, playwrights who has a very observant eye. He had seen life. He has, uh, he has this experience of, uh, you know, uh, this uh, staging the plays also. See, he knew the audience and what people demanded, and he also know particularly the roundings and what exactly did they want. So all these are coming back to the tragedies and Hamlet in particular. We see that yes, there are many elements which are very much there in all the tragedies that are written by Shakespeare, and as uh, Ms. Wahana Parikh has already highlighted upon that also. But this Hamatya that she mentioned earlier, the hero's tragic flaw, is something that you have mentioned just now. Mm -hmm. That this is uh, he finds it very difficult to you know reach that decision, and uh, though. Uh, supernatural elements are there, like all the other mm. tragedies, they are very much there also. So he knows that his father was, you know, uh, killed. And even uh, other than that, he knew that the hasty marriage of uh, his uncle with his mother, that was yeah. another sign that he had already with him. So he knew mm. something is there. And yes, this flaw was very much there because he was on one side, you see, this is like a contrast that is created here. On one side, he, his action was really delayed. He definitely mm. broke in 18, uh, mm. did, and he wanted to conform here, but then on the other hand, he killed the eavesdropper Polonius as well. You see why that? So on one hand, he's taking so long to kill the man who has probably killed his father. Mm. So true. Play within the play that he uh, creates that is to get 
the that confirmation also mm -hmm. so we see but this tragic flaw is something that we need to understand that yes all of us we have our own flaws about us mm -hmm. and this teaching and reading shakespeare and reading his tragedies we come to know that a lot of things that happen they happen because of the flaws that we have mm -hmm. so a lot of people have a lot i mean we we know that whatever is wrong with him is because of his procrastination and his mm. inability to you know come to the decision uh, you know quickly so we also see that this if we if we just take the same thing from there and talk about life in general we see that a lot of us may have our own uh, you know faults and these faults are going to lead us to certain uh, you know uh, destinations that are going to uh you know tell us that see this is what you did and now you are going to face the consequences and you are in that kind of a fix or tension and problem a number of times you see like people around us they do things that are wrong and they think of uh, you know very bright future or good outcomes but when these good outcomes do not turn up they don't look at the fault in them rather they mm. start looking at the fault that could be there uh you know because of other forces that are there and maybe other people and they fail to understand that this flaw can be within them also so when you read hamlet in particular it tells us that yes on one hand we have to uh, we cannot be you know uh, act on the spur of the moment we have to take our time we have to get yeah. we need to confirmation that's important but it should not be too so like, i mean so like hamlet yes. contemplated to be or not to be He exactly. was wavering. He was wavering between life and death. He was a That's confused true. soul. Very, very extremely confused. So these confusions are going to lead you nowhere. So I think mm. you should. Nobody should be taking that long time as Hamlet might have taken. So this is there is a great lesson for uh, maybe all of us in the you know because Shakespeare knows life and these uh, uh, human beings and uh, the uh, you know things that they might do at any moment and then. this gives us an understanding of life of the people around us and at the same time it tells us how exactly we can take care of our life so that we do not commit these you know mm -hmm. mistakes in life all right yes. i think i should i should yeah. i should make yeah. bush yeah. speak now <laughs> which uh -huh. i i mean when you both were both both about, about hamlet <laughs> so i felt like saying few words here sorry miss busha this okay. couple of minutes uh, Uh, Hamlet. Uh, uh, both of you said that he was confused to be or not to be. Personally, I feel since we are uh, students of literature and we have every right to have our own opinion. Personally, I feel that uh, Hamlet has been curtained behind this, uh, you know, a very soft image of being confused and being someone who is uh, procrastinating and all. He was, he was quite a coward. he could not muster up enough courage to actually take the action of uh, killing uh, his uh, uncle or the murderer of uh, his uh, father and every now and then i feel that he is he knows it i i don't feel there is any confusion because it is said that maybe the ghost is a projection of his imagination or maybe he sees that and during the course of the play we get to know that the other companion of his also sees the ghost so it's not exactly a projection of his imagination so uh, he is quite sure about it i i don't not even once i felt that he's confused if he has killed or not uh, he was quite sure but it's only that uh, he could not uh, gather enough courage to exactly carry on with the action of killing someone so because the, because because that time claudius was not only his uncle but also his mother's husband so probably that there, was, there is this uh, despite of uh, the fact that he was his mother's husband he was the king and yeah. keeping that uh, that thing in mind that killing a king was uh, in case of macbeth also when the king is killed the, you know the the crime of the murder become far more heinous and heinous yeah. Um, uh, killing any other person, and especially when he was their guest, also. So, uh, uh, talking about Hamlet, I feel that uh, I'm not exactly a very great fan or big fan of Hamlet. I feel that he was uh, he was not a very strong character. He may be intellectual. Uh, he may be uh, someone. He was not a good lover at all. Uh, because of him, Ophelia died. He was uh, not a good son. I feel and. Uh, as someone who was revengeful for his father's uh, murder i don't think he was a, uh, he was confused there was no confusion 
All right, Miss. Uh, thank you for your input. Uh, Bushra, uh, let's remember the times when our teachers at the Karachi University, they, they used to familiarize us with the age poets and writers wrote in. Right. Like before we, before we studied Shakespeare, we studied Elizabethan age. So uh, I think if we don't talk about Shakespeare's uh, history plays, this, this conversation would remain incomplete. So what do you think Shakespeare's history plays reveal about the Elizabethan age, about the age when Shakespeare was writing? All right, Uruj, I would begin with uh, a little background. Fine, so what are history plays? Uh, Shakespeare himself had written all these plays, what Sir Zan was talking about, and what Ms. Rohana has cleared, uh, that he was not confused. Fine, so uh, there is another perspective to it that yes, Shakespeare had not categorized his own plays. He had merely written to entity. It was the first folio which categorized the plays into tragedies, comedies, and then uh, history plays, and the uh, rest of the other yondras. But if we just look at that categorization, those history plays are actually 10 Shakespeare plays, which were depicting the history from the time of 12th century to 16th century. And that was the time when the medieval monarchs were ruling. And uh, that was the time of the Tudor dynasty as well. So he has mentioned uh, with the names, with the titles, and with uh, focus on the characters, and there were real life characters, the heroes, and that they were monarchs. Like King John was there, uh, the, his plays are named after them, and uh, there was uh, Richard II, Henry the Fourth, Part One, Two, Three. These were the plays, and then there were the uh, there was this play Henry the Fifth, the most celebrated hero of that time, and then Henry the Sixth, Part One, Two, Three. And uh, later, that comes the time when he writes uh, Richard the Third and Henry the Eighth. Fine. These were the ten plays. And what were those ten plays actually showing? Those ten plays were revolving around the lives, the biographies, the events of these monarchs, the struggles which they went through. But if we connect it with the Elizabethan age, how is this all connected? Since they, it is not the time. It is not Elizabethan age which these people have lived. Mm. Shakespeare has actually benefited with, uh, you can say, depiction of these characters. He has portrayed them. He has used their history. And he has somehow or the other focused on the problems of his own time. He himself, Shakespeare himself, was a great and avid reader of history. And he loved dramatizing as well. So what did he do that he uh, uh, built up uh, the situation around these characters, which was more of a fictional situation. And obviously, they had their own uh, historical value as well, which could not be denied. There, there were so many factual things which he has quoted in his, his, in his uh, plays. But he, through these characters, he has portrayed the problems of the time. He has uh, shown us the life of the court. He has shown us the life of the nobility. He has shown us that uh, how uh, the taverns were. He has shown us that how uh, the poor people were, how the beggars were, how even the brothels were. Fine. So this was all, you can say, uh, the life of the Elizabethan age. And mm. the politics which he has portrayed in, in these history plays is not the politics of the medieval time. It is actually mm. the politics of the Elizabethan time, which he covered. Mm. And how he himself benefited people of the age would come and watch those plays. He was making business with it. Fine. And uh, it was it kept them uh, intact. It kept them interested into something which was related to history. History is, history is not everyone's choice. Fine. So, and it was a comforting zone for them because there was somebody who was talking about their problems rather in a subtle manner, but yes. And mm -hmm. if you would have talked against the queen, let's say Elizabeth, uh, 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 Queen Elizabeth, so that would have been imprudent on his part. So he did not write anything directly on Queen Elizabeth, but through his writings, he has developed uh, certain things. He never went True. against them, but uh, yes, he developed. And he, in a very subtle manner, he has portrayed his speech. All right, now uh, um, I would like to talk about something that I am uh, really interested in, like Shakespeare's treatment of women. 
I, I have read somewhere that probably in Elizabethan age women were not really allowed to do stage. They were not really allowed to appear on stage. So certain there were certain female characters, immortal characters that Shakespeare has created, but those characters were enacted, performed on stage by by men. Uh, so on one hand, we we have seen William Shakespeare creating women like uh, Desdemona in Othello like a clever woman like like Portia in Merchant of Venice then uh, you know uh, a woman like uh, uh, Lady Macbeth but what I have after reading many of Shakespeare's tragedies what I have come to realize that that probably Shakespeare does not really approve of women in power because what I believe that Shakespeare has dealt with strong women uh, uh, you know uh, uh, with distrust he doesn't really like strong women like we have seen the way he has treated gertrude in in hamlet lady macbeth in macbeth and there are lots of examples like two elder daughters in king lear so what do you think uh, don't uh, what i believe shakespeare's treatment of women is quite ambivalent we don't really know whether he liked womankind or he disliked womankind so sir zain i would ask you what what have you gathered about shakespeare's treatment um, of women so far? I think it would have been far better if somebody else would have been <laughs> asked this question. So, <laughs> and I don't know what you are getting at. <laughs> leading me to. <laughs> <anyways>. <laughs> you are the uh, only I'm, man in this conversation. <laughs> okay, so I'm really troubled by the question. Uh, now, uh, like, if you talk about this, like, so uh, Shakespeare has talked about all kind, kinds of women. You've just given examples of the women who were very strong. And then you have, uh, uh, you know, women like Ophelia as well. Not yeah, that innocent strong. woman so, like a feeling. Yes, very innocent, and you know. But what happened in the end to that innocent also? Mm -hmm. Is yes, maybe I I pity uh, these women too, uh, and Ophelia in particular, uh, you know. But yes, this uh, uh, as you have mentioned already that that this was the time was such where uh, you know these women were not allowed to uh, you know stage or to work or so this was probably. Uh, one of the things of the time also, maybe which made him treat them the way, you know, like many of them were like. So it was not necessarily that he could not stand these strong women or, you know, he could not uh, approve of them or whatever. But yes, these women were strong also, like the ones that you mentioned, and then like Ophelia as well. So these he just projected and uh, portrayed them all and uh, so that you could know that all kinds of women are there. So, but uh again if uh, i think somebody else would like to comment on this uh that would be and then see this question is motivated by a I famous line uttered by written by william shakespeare frailty thy, thy name is woman thy name is a line, yeah, that, a line uttered by hamlet fine yes, yes, mother, yes. But yes, that, yes that's that's, that's true so why did he why did he show such an obnoxious side of can, can i just carry on <laughs> Yes, yes, Mishra, please go on. Uh, since uh, there was this part as well, fine. In uh, if you just look at the history plays, fine. Shakespeare's history plays are actually showing a men's world, major. Mm -hmm. But there are women who he has portrayed. They like we. Uh, he had this uh, lady who is the heroine of France, and the name uh, these days is very famous. Everyone knows about it, Joan of Arc, and in his play she was Joan the Bussel. Fine, and this character is one of the very positive characters. She was a savior. She was a warrior. She mm -hmm. has led France to the wars uh, uh, and has uh, conquered Orleans and all that. Fine, but Shakespeare has portrayed her to be the most notorious and fascinating villains of his time. Mm -hmm. Fine, so this is how he has dealt with women. And uh, if I just look at it in what I have researched, it says that yes, through that even he has won the heart of men, and mm. that was the society of men in real. As the women were not allowed to publish their work, women were not allowed uh, before George Eliot. Uh, we would say that mm. like they were not allowed to publish their work. Even uh, Mary Shelley has suffered because of that. Mm. Frankenstein okay. was published quite later. Fine. So uh, it, it, this was the situation of the contemporary society, not of uh, Elizabethan, even far after that until Romantic mm. Age. Fine. Mm. So he has uh, somehow or the other made the audience happy by showing the powerful character like John of Arc in a very negative way. Mm. Fine. 
and he has even talked about the witchcraft he has ta talked about how women are into amazon's prophecy they are into uh, bloodshed as well fine uh, so this is how shakespeare has very negatively portrayed but uh, mm. the purpose can be different it was maybe purely business or dramatization I'm slightly unhappy with this particular line because Shakespeare created that line for a particular context where Hamlet was talking about was referring to his mother. But since then, during past five centuries, this line has widely been used by men who always I, want to trivialize. And uh, I, I would like to say something on comment on this uh, Shakespeare uh, treatment of women. Shakespeare uh, is a writer of Elizabethan age. Queen uh, Elizabeth was uh, reigning in England, and he was one of the favorite writers of Queen Elizabeth. And uh, she used to enjoy uh, his play a lot. And I would say that he is kind of anti woman or something you know right now i feel as if this kind of image is being projected that he did not like women and he was anti women who wanted to portray as someone who's weak or not strong you see if we look at the time though queen elizabeth was the queen in this context we may say that how come they have not given enough representation to the strength of women character for that matter yeah. if you look at the character of lady macbeth I mean, she is one of the strongest women, uh, I think, portrayed in English literature. The entire action of Macbeth is because of Lady Macbeth. And uh, later also, she suffers from guilt and she's unable to put up with that guilt and commit but suicide. But Ms. Perez, there is one more side to that. She was the one who convinced her husband to do something yes. terribly wrong. But at exactly. the same time, you see, ambition. <laughs> Ambish, being ambitious, if you look at men also, they if you are talking about morality, that they have not been shown exactly someone who have very strong uh, morality sense or their moral values were not as strong as that of men. Maybe at points they were they, they, they were presented as uh, someone who is, uh, you know, a piece of federation, someone who is, uh, you know, for entertainment and they would be you know, good lovers or something like this, but not exactly someone who's participating in the different actions of uh, when he's dealing uh, with royalty, how to, uh, but Cleopatra is there. If you look at Cleopatra, obviously mm. she is the uh, history and she was a strong woman and she has been depicted there. And I, when, when I read about Lady Macbeth, I feel that uh, he holds uh, a very high opinion of women that if they want, they can achieve a lot. They have that metal, that substance in them. But maybe it's circumstantial that they are not allowed to go beyond this. They were this that that is the time, this, the century we are talking about, the time we are talking about. Women, they were completely dependent on men. They just could not, nobody could think of them being uh, as individual or uh, individually surviving in that society. They wanted any approval, they wanted any recognition in society. They uh, had to have it through some men. So I, even then, he has given enough representation to these women in case of Romeo and Juliet. Also. So probably Shakespeare yeah. made his people realize that if they were not giving any authority or power to their women, they are right. <laughs> because once <laughs> they get power, they will behave like the uh, King Lear's daughters <laughs> and uh, uh, Lady Macbeth in Macbeth. What's, what's wrong with Lady Macbeth? I mean, because uh, she, you see, flaw lies with Macbeth. Flaw doesn't mm. lie with Lady Macbeth. And this is how the play proceed. Mm. I mean, the woman, she was, uh, she, she tries to convince him, but at the end of the day, it's Macbeth who commits the murder. It's not Lady Macbeth. Okay. Lady Macbeth, yeah. But probably she was so, the one who, who who had this idea of, you know, she is the trigger Macbeth of the film, right? Yeah. She's the one who triggered. Maybe, but see, there, 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 there are diverse opinions on this. Also, says, Prality, thy name is Lady Macbeth, more frail than Lady Macbeth, because he. And see, even uh, Hamlet's mother has not been projected in a positive light because the way she married, you know, in a month's time after her husband died, and Hamlet wasn't really, you know, okay with this particular action of his mother. So uh, probably even Gertrude has not been projected in. Very, uh, very clearly, they have written that she uh, incest is mentioned, right? So a lot of negativity is there. Yeah, true. Well, yes, and, uh, then you wanted to say something. Yes, uh, you reminded me of when you quoted that line, so we see that there are actually many aspects to it. 
uh, yes, if you talk about the play Hamlet, it was this, uh, the lady was weak. But do you think that Hamlet was a very strong character himself? Was Hamlet very strong? Did, did he no, have he this power? He huh? cries. <laughs> no, the crying crying is okay. Crying is okay. But wavering. But yeah, I have also cried in my life, so I won't say that. that makes Compared to the medieval crazy. character, uh, like uh, he was told not uh, strong. Yes, he was. I don't think so that he was very strong, even when he was calling. Uh, and then, yes, that particular uh, Ophelia was, uh, you know, that kind. But there are many other aspects also. Like Bisho has uh, very rightly highlighted earlier that when uh, Shakespeare was writing, he was writing this. There was a commercial value to it also. Commercial and the value. Audience, yeah. Yes, and this, this, the audience. And of course, if you talk about this uh, male domineering or the male chauvinism that was there. Uh, you know, among people, and maybe I, I just think that maybe most of the people in the audience were men also. So maybe to make them a bit happy about it, or uh, maybe he said it though. In this particular, you know, quote is definitely extremely discriminatory, and you cannot really say that. But if you talk about this particular female character here, then it fits in there. But at the same time, it shows us that. Hamlet, no matter he was the one who, uh, you know, uh, uttered it. He himself is not very strong too, and whatever mm -hmm. he has done has really. Uh, and uh, Miss Rohana has also talked about the what kind of a lover was he, because of he killed the father of the girl that he thinks or stays True. or whatever that he's in love with, and even the kind of treatment that he gave to her in the end. And was he happy in the? I mean, did, mm -hmm. was there any kind of satisfaction that he had? So he lost his father. Fine. He lost his mother as well. For whether who was wrong, whether it was the character of the mother. Yes, if you talk about mothers remarrying, uh, anybody for that matter uh, was okay. He had no problem to with his. He had problem with his uncle otherwise also. So he thought that he was not that kind of character that the mother could have, been, you know, married. And thirdly, he yes, he thought of the, this hasty marriage was. It was too hasty. As too hasty. Yeah. You know, once she kind, she 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 married. Exactly. So all these things are, uh, you know, uh, there, which lead us to think that yes, uh, he stated it. But I would strongly uh, say that the statement in itself is definitely should not be over generalized, though it's but done. But people do. But, but people do that. The problem I is have that also, the I have also done that too. <laughs> whenever <laughs> men, whenever men have to relegate a woman, they would say, okay, oh, Shakespeare said the same. Seven Ages of Men, Shakespeare has been a pessimist most in most of his, you can say, uh, whatever writings he is. He wasn't uh, in love with life there, again. There had been situations where he was optimistic, like Under the Greenwood Tree is the uh, most optimistic song ever written by William Shakespeare. But yes, a lot like Seven Ages of Men is a pessimistic view of life. And so he and has then it is well. one of my students this time when I was teaching the seven ages of man, one of my students said, Miss, not even once has he referred to a woman in this particular uh, poetic yeah. verse, like school going boy, an infant child, a lover, a soldier, yeah. justice, not even once has he referred to women. So don't we women live, you know, the same kind of life. Even, his, I, I monologues, was, even his monologues uh, are uh, mostly by men. Yes, true. there is a calculation of or the entire percentage of the monologues, which is like mostly by men. A great number, the largest number in which in one of the place is forty percent by women. So I think we can we can have a research on this particular thing as well as to why. <laughs> so <laughs> many, like, all the words are staged, and we all men and women are actors, and yes, they yes. are. But 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 yes. uh, Miss, have the a look at the seven stages. Already mentioned. That, that, but yeah, have a look at these stages. Infant baby, school going boy. This <laughs> building up his ask me this question. Of women. Let let oh, him right. know. How could he mention both the genders <laughs> while writing a piece of poetry like this? How could he mention both the genders? I, yeah, but I the thing is, English language in English language has two separate and words. You know, like, that, uh, William Shakespeare was equally popular among uh, the ladies. Rather, he was more popular among ladies. Even and his Queen plays were more like popular him. among ladies. Because as we have been talking about men more. <laughs> but uh, Miss, when when women like like me, when they read Shakespeare, we read Shakespeare with this, critical this is, eyes. This is the point. Actually, we are talking about the time, say, 400 years back. He was writing 400 years back. In today's time, the status of women is completely different, how they are treated and different uh, 
areas of life where they have Miss Mona, can I say something here? Uh, like you have said that women also liked him. So it was uh, we would we can also relate to it in today's time, the backward areas of Pakistan, especially women like uh, uh, women being uh, somehow or the other uh, dominated by men. If anyone uh, would get up from our society and uh, I would not mention the privileged part of Pakistan, but yet uh, if you just look at the underprivileged part of Pakistan, even the women uh, do not want the other women to be stronger or to achieve something uh, fine. So th this is this is something which is like by the lady herself. Busha, it is because patriarchy still rules. Exactly. This is one of the stark realities of 21st century. There are patriarchal societies, and we are living in one of such societies. We are, where we are really living in one of such societies. To some of the other extent, we really don't want. We uh, ourselves don't want the feminism to come whatsoever, we call it. Oh, so this discussion is really... Yeah, I think it's a very really <laughs> sensitive <laughs> topic. We have just started discussing it. <laughs> Let's stick to <laughs> William Shakespeare. <laughs> See, okay, let's three, <laughs> three women and I'm the only person here, so I really, no, I, 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 yes. <laughs> I floated this question towards Zen Saab in the first place. I wanted him to answer that question. Only then I moved to Ms. Rohana and Bushra. Okay, uh, so let's talk about International English Language Day because Shakespeare Day coincides with, coincides with in International English Language Day. And uh, unfortunately, there are a great number of schools where, where Shakespeare is not being taught despite the fact that he has contributed a lot to the progress as well as to the spread of English language. So, uh, Ms. Rohana, would you tell us as to how Shakespeare has added to the versatility of English language? Well, uh, William Shakespeare has a lot to do when it comes to English language. I mean, uh, it is said that uh, one out of ten words is invented by William Shakespeare. He is actually the inventor of a number of words. Number of and words, if yeah. I could uh, go for the list which I have uh, here with me, it says that eyeball, uh, puking, obscene, cold-blooded, hot-blooded, addiction, assassination, belonging, so disheartened, eventful, fashionable, list goes on and on. These words, they are being invented by him. And so, yesterday I was reading somewhere that a, a term like skim milk was invented by William Shakespeare. And in uh, if we refer to the text that we teach, like why saws, he has invented Vice different saws. phrases yeah. also, which are uh, you know so so unique in their treatment of the subject that they they fit there just like that. So he has, uh, I mean, uh, his contribution. I mean, you can comment on his contribution. Okay, and you talked yes. about teaching uh, Shakespeare to young uh, students. Uh, obviously, teaching Shakespeare is likely to give that flavor to their language. Not only in language, it is going to give them insight in the uh, in different characters. He has the way he has delineated characters, his understanding of characters, the the depth with which he deals with it. I was I had just read it somewhere that. Uh, Prince Charles has said that, uh, how come Shakespeare knew so much about the life of a prince? True. How much he could he could relate while reading his plays, he could relate that whatever he has said about the life or difficulties or different kind of situations the prince has to go through. So his understanding of different characters, obviously reading his plays, reading his work is going to impart it to the children. For us, people like us, like uh, foreign learners of this language, maybe Shakespearean text can be really challenging and really at times difficult to understand, especially for young children. But obviously, we, we should not uh, abandon it because of difficulty. To some extent, we should teach the original text to the students to give this extraordinary flavor of language. So I think the contribution is enormous Amen. and always be. All right. Uh, Sir Zen, what do you think? How easy or how difficult it is for us, for teachers like us, to teach William Shakespeare to our students? I think it depends on the teacher. And I'm sure that you are doing a great job already. Like, you are teaching uh, a bit of it. So uh, I think that it is uh, it is going to be in the hand of the teacher only that how they deal with that. 
and uh, as mr hana has already talked about that there are two there are many contributions that are made by william shakespeare so reading him is going to give us a better understanding of life and different characters and all so i think this is the wisdom that our children are going to acquire through that and is definitely very much there so when we teach our children they are going to be interested in life and they are going to be interested in reading literature because if you mm. talk about any language we talk about shakespeare and english right now but no matter what language you talk about when we are reading and what writer we are talking about when you read a particular writer that particular writer is going to uh, in his writing of course or her writing for that matter definitely uh, there are going to be things as that particular person has experienced or whatever he has you know seen and the way he or she has taken life a while back miss bushra uh, arthur was talking about she mentioned george eliot and she said that the women were not allowed uh to you know use their name or whatever uh, i particularly i'm not going to say that i disagree to that but i would say this particular thing that I, my understanding because maybe you are right to some extent that the society did not accept uh that way and they thought that probably if it's something that is written by a man it's going to be uh, going to become more successful but even more than that maybe a woman like maria nevins who used george eliot's name uh she she never wanted to reveal all that about herself because when you are writing about something you are betraying yourself there is a lot that people are going to uh, read so this is there in dh lawrence um, i mean many writers that you see that when they are writing something there is something that is related to their own life that is which is going to be shown there which is which they are going to betray so even sons and lovers by dh lawrence in his lawrence mm. talks about the coal miners and her father was a coal, his own father was a coal miner and then there is there is this you read you know uh, other uh, thomas hardy and you read the things that he has talked about or there are many things that he has experienced himself or seen in life so all this is there and i would like to just share with you that there was a time when i started to write urdu poetry and initially i did not want anybody to read that uh, so whatever was sorry i was hiding from other well, people because i thought that a lot that is personal is going to be revealed to the people and probably at that time at that immature age i i did not i could not make this decision because mary and evans was one of the famous mary uh, shelley mary, if you just like uh, uh, talk about mary shelley she went through a real struggle because her father and her husband both were writers but uh, still they did not recognize her and she had to first publish uh, the work uh, with the name of her husband but later uh, she mm. she did not convince but the situations convinced him and there is a movie on it mary shelley you must watch it and we all must watch it and we would be able to see that how difficult it was for her to get it published uh, with her name frankenstein was later published with her name so this situation has been there and we uh, can also see that how batsheba's character has yeah. brought uh, all that out of the women misery and she was the she is one of those characters which is showing the change and the re revolution and the evolution which was coming Uh, in the time and character of the woman majorly all right uh, so since we have moved towards the uh, culmination of this session there is one thing that i would like to tell my students by means of this session that shakespeare is universal he is referred to as a universal playwright as a universal poet because he talked about things which are quite close to us for example if you want to read about life read the seven ages of man if you want to read about death read hamlet's to be or not to be if you want to read about love read his sonnet number 116 where he says let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments i was in love with this particular sonnet when i was uh, studying at school so shakespeare has so genuinely portrayed some emotions that uh, that we can't really uh, find anybody who would who would match his intelligence or his representation of human life so uh, i am going to conclude the session uh, but if any of uh, you if any one of you wants to say something as uh, uh, the final note please you are uh, you are you are requested to say something ms rohana because i am going to close this conversation would you like to leave a message for your students because some of them are watching this session right now obviously uh, in accordance uh, with the day i would just say that uh, studying literature is something which can bring about a lot of change in your life i have seen many people i myself have been a student of science and question myself that why do 
we have to study poetry for quite some time and then move to literature and then i realized that i can i can actually compare that studying literature has actually brought about a lot of change in my perception in my life in my career also in my personal life in the my social interaction and in so literature is such a beautiful a subtle uh, thing in our lives and we should enjoy it we should read it whenever we get time we should entertain and treat ourselves with literature and uh, since we are talking about william shakespeare so he is one of the greatest writer and uh, people can go on and on uh, talking about his merits mm -hmm. talking about uh, his skill talking about his uh, intellect talking about his understanding all these things we can go on and on uh, for days and people have been working for centuries on william shakespeare so it is our privilege that we can uh, get access to it especially in today's time it's a privilege that we can easily get access uh, to his plays and understand them also so to these young people uh, i would just suggest that uh, especially in this pandemic time when we have plenty of time so you are surfing through your mobile uh, surf through these things also where you would uh, read something meaningful something beautiful which is definitely going to leave you with something which will bring about a lot of change in your upcoming yes yes sir then do you want to say something yes of course i would like to say that it's uh, this on this day in particular i would request all my students that see we have we have tried made an effort to talk about things that are there that were there in shakespeare there is a lot that shakespeare has for you so read shakespeare read literature literature is going to make you a far better human being not a good man or a good woman but a better human being and at the same time it is going to give you that insight that how you could uh, you know spend a life that is going to be meaningful and better and at the same time i would like to say that think beyond that also and start writing we all have our own experiences we True. all experience life we all come across different sort of people good bad we have misfortunes and we have for good things in life as well so express yourself in your writing this is such an important thing to do because every time we ask our students to write and there's some who really write things that are really great so mm -hmm. i would like to just say thank you once again comics thank you ruj thank you mr ana and mishra and everyone and those who are watching us or will watch it later please read literature this is very important in this time thank you very much thank you very much yes mishra all right uh, in the end i would just extend my apology to all the listeners who are out there that if anything has is like gone wrong in doing so because no, i you have spoken correctly you know, our teachers yes, yes. might also be watching fine and it's been a rush not 10 years but 15 years straight I'm so uh, sorry. <laughs> i said over 10 years that's okay <laughs> it's okay but you should be happy with that in <laughs> years i don't feel myself like with me and mr hana were discussing in the morning that we don't really feel ourselves that we are at a level to discuss shakespeare it was like a lot of courage which we uh, took and uh, we are here to discuss it and another thing which i want to just say Uh, say to my students is this that don't take a uh, learning literature or studying literature as a burden at all but take it as an opportunity it is a huge opportunity which these organizations which are rendering science and commerce or uh, 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 other even computer science whatever field they are uh, uh, providing for the students to study along with that they are dealing with humanities as well so humanities itself is a huge field it mm. has a scope in the world it is not only at an individual level or choices uh, these days but yes uh, around the world there are fields which uh, maybe people would like to have later in life and would get attracted later in life for example i tell my students a lot of time that united nations offer so many jobs to social scientists mm. and from pakistan only so we should also look at these things from that perspective that maybe we will get interested later in life so we should give equal value to all the subjects it's all right so in the end i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you for making this thoughtful thought provoking and insightful session possible thank you very much mr rohana sir zain and bushra thank you very for, for uh, thank you very much for coming together for this particular session 
all right so this is where we call it a day thank you very much uh, uh, the ones who have joined this session who have appreciated our effort inshallah we'll continue with such insightful sessions in future as well uh, so uh, let's call it a day allah hafiz everyone allah hafiz love hafiz. 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 Hafiz.